Our reading today is, <clears throat> excuse me, from the New Living Translation of the Bible, and it is Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. That was the biggest or one of the most important cities in Greece at that time. And it is 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 20. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought Christ merely, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. I'm in love. With a TV show. It's on the DIY channel, the do it yourself channel, similar to the Home and Garden Network, only HGTV helps people find and decorate homes. DIY builds them. And the show that has me hooked is called Maine Cabin Masters. I've taped most of the shows and I watch one a day during the week. And the baritone voice announcer starts each program with the words, in a state called vacation land, there are thousands of cabins that haven't been changed in decades all over the great state of Maine. And then we meet the team. I'm Chase and I lead the team. Ashley, my sister, is the designer. Brian, my brother-in-law, is my voice of reason. Dixie and Jedi can handle any project we give them. We're all best friends, and we love it. And the show begins. The team meets with the owners of a derelict cabin that's been in the family for generations, but probably hasn't been visited in probably the last, say, 20 years or so. And so we go inside with the team and see the dustiest, dirtiest, who would want to live here residence. Ants and mice and water have done the damage. The cabin has to be leveled, the walls stripped down to the bare, the bare bones, all the debris thrown away, and the words, we have a lot of work to do, said in that understated way. On camera, it looks like Chase is sharing the vision of new walls and a new roof, new bathrooms, move the kitchen over there, open up this wall and let in more light, and overall begin again from the walls inside and out. In six to eight weeks, the team works together to restore, rebuild, renew. And the designer meets up with like local craftspeople, 
I mean, she makes these unique glass globes or uh, very interesting floor coverings, paintings and tapestries, even a whistle that makes the sound of a loon. It's all very vain. It's creative. It's entertaining. It's a fun show. And they usually do something fun as a family or as a team. They'll go swimming in the local waterfall or, or maybe go to a zip line park. It's always something different and interesting. And at the end of the show, the family comes back to ooh and awe and marvel at what the cabin, that, what it was to what it is now. And the before and after pictures are amazing. Trace and his team take special care to honor the family's history by adding personal touches and preserving the artifacts that are associated with the cabin. The family is overwhelmed with joy. As I've been watching this little show through the season of pandemic, I finally asked myself, what is it about this show that captures my attention, that, that makes me long for more? And suddenly it hit me. The program is about transformation. The old, run-down, dirty, dingy cabin is made new. New paint, new walls, new wood throughout, transform the falling down, tired old place into a new and beautiful home. Transformation from what was to what is. As we United Methodists often say, making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Fancy name for change. All through the Bible, the stories of the men and women who were transformed, usually by their encounter with God. Jacob wrestles with God and his hip is wrenched out of its socket. Moses in the burning bush and then leading the Israelites through the desert. Elijah and Elisha, Isaiah and Jeremiah, the woman at the well, the lepers, the blind, the lame, and certainly Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus. Since then, John Wesley's heart, strangely worn. John Newton, a slave trader to the writer of Amazing Grace. Corey Ten Boom, who forgave the worst of the worst concentration camp soldiers. To Chuck Colson of Watergate fame, sitting in his car the night before entering prison and experiencing the love of God, which became his work in prison ministry. They and many, many, many more had an encounter with God and were transformed by it from unloving and unforgiving to sharing God's word and showing compassion to those who were unforgivable. Change from the inside out, which is what God does best. Sanctifying grace, the change within us to become more like Jesus. Paul tells us this is a gift from God. And out of this gift comes the task of reconciliation. Reconciliation, the fancy word for forgiveness. Or as Paul says, no longer counting people's sins against them. Do we have opportunities for forgiveness? Can we see places for reconciliation? We see it in the world, we see it in our country, we see it in the church, the need for reconciling people's hurt and pain and offering God's love and grace in place of it. In this season of pandemic, we have been given the opportunity to slow down, to take stock, to really look around us and inside us. We stand on the brink of doing a new thing, of making a change, of transforming. And maybe we need to allow old attitudes and negative thinking to become transformed 
into a new spirit of love and kindness. Or maybe we need to make verse 10 of Psalm 51 our prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. As I watch the cabin masters in Maine, I've come to several observations about them. They compliment each other. That was good. You did a great job. They come to a challenge, like a shower stall that doesn't fit in the space like they thought it would or like it's supposed to. And they find a way to work it out. They work in the cold, the rain, the snow, whatever conditions present themselves. And they respect each other's talents and abilities. They show compassion toward each other. And they can build anything. Sounds like a church. Sounds like it should be the church. The cabins in Maine that are transformed from old to new. And we too can experience that inner change. With our focus on God and placing Jesus at the center of our faith and our lives, we can experience God's grace and pass that grace on to others. Paul wrote in that oft-quoted verse 17, this means that anyone who believes, who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone, and a new life has begun. Let's put those words to the test. Let us pray. O oh God, create clean hearts within us and renew our loyal spirits. Open us up to new possibilities and new opportunities to serve you faithfully, humbly, and with grace. As you have loved us, May we love others and be a blessing back to you. Amen. Our final video is the song, Draw Me Close to You. <laughs>